We've reviewed a lot of subwoofers on our channel, but today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different. A DIY 15-inch subwoofer with dual 15-inch passive radiators from Parts Express. We had a lot of fun putting this project together, so if you want to see how we did it, and most importantly, how it sounds, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so as I mentioned, what we're looking at here is a DIY subwoofer that we put together ourselves using a kit from Parts Express. I also want to mention that they were kind enough to send these parts over to us so we could try it out, and we want to give them a big thanks for that. Anyway, this kit is actually pretty impressive with a 15-inch Dayton Audio aluminum cone driver paired with two 15-inch passive radiators, all of which go into a custom CNC cut 3 quarter inch thick MDF cabinet with a one and a half inch thick front baffle. But of course, being a parts kit, you'll need to assemble this subwoofer yourself, so let's get into the build. Each one of the panels in this flat pack are cut to fit the drivers, so all we had to do is line up each panel and start gluing them together. Once we started putting the panels together, making sure that they were as square as possible, we also went ahead and stapled them together to help make sure that they stayed lined up. With the entire cabinet assembled, we then clamped it all together and let the glue dry. The only problem was we actually didn't have enough clamps to keep the cabinet together, so we had to improvise a little and use some tie down straps with these 90 degree corner blocks that we made to make sure the straps wouldn't dig into the corners of the subwoofer and mess it up. Once all the glue was dry, the structure of the cabinet was pretty much finished, so we went ahead and prepped the cabinet for paint using Bondo and an electric palm sander to fill some of the gaps and holes in the cabinet. Next, we went ahead and started drilling out all of the screw holes for the driver, the radiators, the binding post, and finally the feet. After this, our next step was to paint the subwoofer. And obviously, depending on how good you want the subwoofer to look, you can spend as much or as little time as you want on the finish. We're just going to be keeping the subwoofer behind our theater seats, so we decided to simply use some satin black spray paint. But the nice thing is, if you ever want to take the time, you could do a really nice wood veneer or a synthetic vinyl or something like that to match your setup. With the finish done and the cabinet pretty much ready to go, we got started actually putting the parts in the subwoofer. Starting with this adhesive backing foam material that Parts Express included, to help dampen the sound waves inside the cabinet. Next, we put in our binding post, which we bought separately. I also had this really nice aluminum plate as it was a spare from when I built my other subs. So I decided to put it behind the binding post, which ended up looking actually pretty nice. We then installed the feet that we bought for this subwoofer and used some extra long bolts that actually go through the bottom of the cabinet and secure with a nut on the other side. So there's no chance that we can accidentally rip the feet out by dragging the subwoofer across the floor, which is possible with regular wood screws. After that, we started getting the passive radiators and the driver ready, and these are pretty easy, especially if you pre-drill the holes like we did. Just drop them in and make sure that each screw hole is lined up. Once those were in, the subwoofer is pretty much complete. All of the parts that Dayton included with this kit especially the driver, all feel very well made with cast aluminum baskets and high quality spring connectors being used to make the assembly easier. We then tested the DC resistance of the subwoofer with a multimeter to make sure there weren't any obvious shorts, and we got around three and a half ohms, which is perfect for this driver. So with all that said, we could finally go ahead and hook up the subwoofer to start our testing. Obviously, this subwoofer doesn't have an amplifier built in, so we decided to hook it up to our QSC RMX 1450 Class AB amplifier that we had on hand to power the sub. This way we can run the amp either in bridge mode or stereo mode depending on how much power we want to send to the sub. Before we get into any of the demos though, I think it's important to talk about a few of the important specs of this subwoofer. Dayton Audio gives us a frequency response rating of 21 to 600 Hertz from the 15 inch aluminum cone driver and dual passive radiators and it can handle 800 watts RMS power with peaks up to 1600 watts. Now, we always recommend staying around the rated RMS power of a sub, and in this case, it's 800 watts. And the reason we feel this way is because if you push the sub closer to its peak power, you could end up overdriving the subwoofer. 
As we already mentioned, the cabinet itself is three quarters of an inch thick MDF with a one and a half inch thick front baffle, which should do a really good job of preventing cabinet resonance. And it helps bring the total weight of this subwoofer up to 72 pounds or about 32 kilograms. Just to get a feel of how the subwoofer sounded in a real world situation, we tested it with both movies and music. And to be honest, we were very impressed with how good this subwoofer sounded right off the bat. For a 15 inch subwoofer, this thing is very fast and transparent. I feel like the lightweight and rigidity of the aluminum cone that Dayton went with helps a lot to give this sub really nice tactile and realistic sound with plenty of output thanks to the dual passive radiators. In fact, the sound reminded us a lot of our Aperion Audio Bravis 12D, which has a similar design using a 12 inch driver and two 12 inch passive radiators. That said, the Parts Express sub was able to dig much deeper and it produced quite a bit more output. Of course, the Brabus 12D isn't really designed to compete with the Dayton audio kit. It's a pre-built sub with a smaller driver, a built-in amplifier, and it costs more. But purely comparing the sound, we think the Parts Express kit beats it. The Dayton audio kit also managed to produce those higher bass frequencies really well. We never felt like the bass was boomy or muddy, especially around the 50 to 60 hertz range where you'll get those really impactful explosions and gunshots in movies like Fury. Four, one, With that said, we don't feel like it was able to get quite as deep as other subs like our SVS SB3000 that's rated to go down to 18 hertz. But the Parts Express sub, while only rated to go down to 21 hertz, felt like it had quite a bit more output compared to the SB3000. In our review of the SB3000, we mentioned that they were really good for watching movies, and although quite good for music, we did feel like there are subs out there that are better for stereo listening. Well, we feel like the Dayton Audio Kit is one of those subs. We tried a lot of different tracks from Jennifer Warren's, Brothers in Arms, Mannheim Steamroller, and a lot of others, and every single song sounded amazing through this sub. It even did a great job blending with our Vandersteen Towers, which is saying quite a lot. I feel like it even blended with my custom dual opposing 15 inch subs really well, which each cost a lot more than this kit and have a much bigger internal volume, which again is really impressive for a subwoofer coming in at under $600. I've always really liked sealed subs and I've mentioned that before in our previous videos, but I also really like the extra output of a ported subwoofer and I feel like having a dual passive radiator subwoofer is really a good compromise. This sub is fast, transparent, and blended in really well with all the other equipment in our home theater. One thing to keep in mind is your results could vary depending on the type and quality of amplifier you pair the subwoofer with. The QSC RMX 1450 that we used is a pro class AB amp that can deliver a ton of very clean power. You don't want to just go with a cheap budget amp because you may not be happy with the end results. Now obviously building a subwoofer isn't for everyone, but if you want to take on a fun project and you're willing to put in the work to save quite a bit of money on a subwoofer that's incredible for music and it does a really good job with home theater, then we think you should definitely consider putting together this Parts Express kit. And with that said, I think it's time to wrap up this video. Again, we want to give a huge thanks to Parts Express for sending over this kit and we hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to check out this kit or anything else that Parts Express offers, We'll be sure to leave a link to their site down in the description. Let us know if you have any questions or comments on this DIY Dayton Audio subwoofer kit, and we'll do our best to help you out. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And as always, have an awesome day.